At New York, Howard McCullough, manager service shops, explains the new sales agreement his department has with the three sales departments. This year, 1957, is the 75th anniversary of the apparatus service shops. We are doing a number of things to commemorate the event and help promote service shop business. For one thing, we have just entered into an agreement mutually satisfactory with the Three Spiel Sales Department on sales service rendered in connection with service shop orders. Under this agreement, all four departments share the responsibility for re realization of budgeted service shop orders received. While we shall continue to provide the, most of the sales coverage, we do expect and want sales help from the three field sales departments. Under our new agreement, orders may be solicited by either the service shops or by the sales departments or by both together. And they will be processed by the local service shop. But no matter how the orders are obtained, they will be credited on a purchaser basis to the apparatus sales engineer and local component area in accordance with latest ASD instructions. Service shop orders received will be identified and listed with other commission plan product lines under 910 for commercial repair service shops, 911 for distribution transformer repairs, and 912 for aircraft apparatus shops. This agreement has been in effect since January 1, and of course it has the full support of Mr. Hines, Corbin, and Ruling. Let's hear from the field sales department's direct. First speaking from New York, Art Hines. The service shop should be used as a sales tool by all of our salesmen as a means for getting orders for new equipment. With our former difficulties erased by this new agreement, I am going to hold East District Manager responsible for seeing to it that the service shops are effectively used as a sales tool. Also commenting from his New York office, Wells Corbin. CID sales engineers are in a particularly good spot to watch for and help obtain business that the service shop people otherwise might not get. Furthermore, all our CID sales engineers should be alert to opportunities where service shop functions can help hold on to or increase a customer's business. For instance, in supplying service in a particular geographical area for a machinery builder customer of ours who otherwise would have no service facilities for his product. With this new agreement, we should be able to add substantially to the service shop's orders received. And finally, Speaking for Charlie Ruling is Dick Johnson. In Mr. Ruling's absence at Crotonville, it is my privilege to emphasize to every member of ANDI sales the importance of this agreement to the successful handling of his customers' needs and problems. This agreement represents a significant step forward in an integrated approach to the defense market and provides us with an additional product in our market basket to round out the sales and services to our customers. Now that we have entered into a mutually satisfactory agreement with the field sales departments, let's put it into effect and make 1957 a really successful anniversary. At Philadelphia, it's Bill Ayers, manager air circuit breaker, views and accessory sales for low voltage switch gear. April 1st will mark the kickoff of a new promotion campaign which is primarily aimed at distributors and should create considerable interest on the part of all your customers, both user and CID. These fuses make up a major but relatively unknown product component line and our coming sales campaign will emphasize the sales techniques to help you sell this important line. The CLF high interrupting capacity current limiting fuse provides efficient and economical short circuit protection for feeders, lighting branch circuits, motor starters, control power circuits, and similar applications 600 volts and below. And remember, all these fuses have tested interrupting ratings of 200,000 symmetrical amperes. The market for these fuses is relatively new, about five years old 
And while General Electric has been in from the start, it wasn't until now that we've been able to offer a complete line. The first, introduction to the replacement market, is set for April 1st and will be carried out by National Trade Journal Advertising, Complete Descriptive Information, GEAs and other publications, Coordination Information, and Distributor Displays. The second phase, an effort to displace ordinary fuses, will point out such ideas as these are not just fuses, but are carefully engineered products. Why and where of current limiting fuses fit? New applications for OEMs and end users. The fuses are in production now on all ratings, and we can fill your orders immediately on a requisition basis. After April 1st, your customers will probably be asking for information on the new complete CLF line. So be sure you are up on the latest material. At Hudson Falls, Capacitor Department Application Engineer Johnny Sains introduces a new smaller and lighter 25 kilobar capacitor. The new 25 kilobar unit marks another General Electric capacitor first. First such as Kraft paper, Pyrenol, through the development of the 50 kilobar unit. First which have made it possible to continually lower the cost per kilobar of capacitors. First which help you sell GE capacitors. The new, lighter, smaller 25 kilobar unit incorporates the advantages of the extra low loss craft paper which led to the development of the 50 kilobar unit. Compared to the previous General Electric 25 kilobar unit, which was the smallest and lightest unit in the industry for the past eight years, the new 25 is 20% thinner, 11% shorter, and weighs 19 pounds less. Weight reduction amounts to more than 25% on a single unit, and up to 225 pounds on a 300 kilobar equipment. These size and weight reductions mean even more competitively. Let's be specific. The new GE 25 kilobar unit is 16% thinner and 10% shorter than its nearest competitor. The new GE 25 kilobar unit has 27% less case volume than its nearest competitor. The new GE 25 kilobar unit is 31% lighter than its nearest competitor. Yet, in keeping with the General Electric tradition of quality engineering, there has been no sacrifice in quality, efficiency, performance, or long life. Here are advantages seldom achieved in the highly competitive capacitor industry. Now to answer your questions. Yes, the new 25 kilobar capacitor complies fully with all NEMA standards it can be easily substituted in standard equipment. Yes, like its big brother, the 50 kilobar capacitor, the new 25 features the fabricated steel case. No, the new 25 kilobar unit will in no way interfere with the 50 kilobar capacitor market. We are in full production on the 50 kilobar unit with warehouse stocks up to authorized levels. We will continue to concentrate our promotion on the 50 kilobar unit. But for those customers who have a need for the smaller kilobar rating, the new smaller, lighter 25 kilobar capacitor unit is now available. Leon Kelly here with news of progress, products, and promotion. At San Jose, California, headquarters for the Atomic Power Equipment Department, organized only two years ago, there's now concentrated effort in designing, developing, manufacturing, and marketing atomic equipment for peacetime uses. It's a big job requiring careful planning by such men as O.B. Falls, manager of marketing, and George White, general manager. 
test facilities are busy now developing refueling procedures for the 180,000 kilowatt Dresden nuclear power station that we're building for Commonwealth Edison near Chicago and will be in operation by 1960. 20 miles northeast of San Jose, the department's new Vallecitos Atomic Laboratory nearing completion will soon help make it possible for our scientists and engineers to speed the day of economical atomic electric power. A developmental boiling water reactor will soon supply steam to a 5,000 kilowatt electric generating station operated by PG&E, and its results are expected to bring us closer to commercial utilization of atomic power. All this development in just two short years of increasing interest to every utility salesman in the years ahead. Instrument department is now producing a new, more competitive HP-30 series of pyrometers for indicating and controlling temperature or for measuring process variables such as speed, vacuum, density, or electrical quantities. Your district instrument specialist now has a sample instrument you can use to point out the benefits of the new pyrometer line to your customers. Among the advantages of the new HP-30 pyrometer is its greatly reduced size. It's more than 56% smaller than the former HP-3 line, making the new series competitive in size with other makes. Using the sample instrument, you can show customers how General Electric has reduced the size of its pyrometer line while improving quality. For example, both the control unit and the instrument are self-contained and are of the plug-in type. That makes the line easier to install and maintain. All of the plug-in control units use printed circuits, permitting size reductions and faster maintenance because of the elimination of old-style wire mazes. The new pyrometer is flexible in use, too. For instance, the control unit is available in six basic forms, plus other variations for special control problems. And the smaller plug-in instrument is housed in a rugged plastic case for maximum protection against rough handling and to keep out foreign matter and moisture. Installation is easier because of automatic lead length compensation, which incidentally eliminates the need to specify external circuit resistance. Installation is easier because electrical connections can be made from the top, side, front, or rear. And maintenance is easier because changes in range can be made on the spot. Formerly, the user had to return the equipment to the factory. In general, the use of printed circuits, high-strength magnet material, and miniature tubes and relays combine to save space, yet improve quality and accuracy. To customers in the heat-treating market, such as manufacturers and users of furnace, oven, drying, plastic extrusion, and rubber fabricating equipments, the sales kit can help demonstrate the benefits of the HP-30 pyrometer. Smaller size for savings in panel board space. Easier installation and servicing. Higher accuracy, plus or minus one half of one percent of instrument span, as well as close reproducible control. And lower price, nearly 10% lower. A new saleable product, the new HP-30 Pyrometer, a leader in quality, size, price, and delivery. See your instrument specialist. Here's another new product now in production. The new flexible 12-pole relay from the General Purpose Control Department, available in two models. One is the standard 12-pole machine tool relay, and the other is a latched-in form. Both are now available in ratings up to 600 volts and 60 cycles. Compared with the alternate method of using two 6-pole relays, one 12-pole relay takes 30% less space. It costs 6 to 13% less, and it requires 30% fewer volt amperes. Thus, using the new 12-pole relay, saves on panel space, saves on original cost, and saves on control power transformer requirements. In addition, the new relay is easy to wire and mount thanks to accessible captive clamp terminals 
designed for plain wire, ring, or spade crimped on terminals. The keyhole slots on top and bottom help reduce mounting time. Longer mechanical life is another feature. The new 12-pole relay's life has an average of 15 million operations. Its silver contacts close with a rolling motion for longer life and better seating. And for flexibility, they can be easily changed from normally open to normally closed without extra parts. Also for longer life, a strong box coil helps protect windings against moisture, oil, or cutting fluids and minimizes damage from a slipping screwdriver. That's General Purpose Control's new 12-pole machine tool relay, offering savings in space, cost, and power, along with easier maintenance and longer mechanical life. Coming soon to your district is a special slide presentation of the advantages of low-voltage draw-out switchgear. Specialists from ASD's Power Systems Engineering Unit and from low-voltage switchgear are pooling efforts with district switchgear specialists and application engineers to bring you news of late developments in low-voltage switchgear applications. Watch for their visit to your district. That's all for now. See you in the next issue of Apparatus News.